Speaking of which, have you heard of the, uh, you heard the news about Uvalde? <laughs> the, uh, the cowards were like found innocent by an independent review board or something like that. So is this a situation where they've conducted their own investigation and they've realized that they're not at fault? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And it's like, and they say independent, but, and then I also looked at the, what they actually said they were doing. And what they found is that the, the cops did not violate policy. Well, okay. Then you've got really crappy policies. If your policy isn't to dive in and help people who are getting hurt is what I would think. Maybe I'm being silly and ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, our, their policies are obviously going to be based on what keeps them out of trouble because they don't want them test lying and saying, oh, I uh, was out of policy. Well, if there's no policy, you can't be out of policy. And then the attorney can't cross. You know, we were talking about attorney stuff earlier today. It's like, well, then the attorney can't cross examine and say, well, isn't it true that this is against policy? No, it's not against policy. We did everything in policy. Oh, great. You could be a piece of crap and you're in policy. Great. Like, yep. you know, in but here's the thing. If those individual government terrorists slash officers are OK with not having a policy that says we must go save children when children are in danger. I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like they should maybe just instead of shooting at other people, turn the gun around. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I think about the the excuse that like I, I could kind of see that if I was still you know, if I had a security agency and in my security agency, I, I would not want to have a policy that said if there's a big, huge gunfight going on, run right into it, because then when all of my employees did that and they got shot and hurt, then their families would sue me and it would be so, like I understand personnel issues in, in developing policies, but but it would seem to me that there would be something that's like it's kind of like your job to do this right. and you're going to do it in as safe of a manner as is reasonable and waiting 70 minutes is not reasonable when somebody's shooting behind you. Like, yeah. I don't know, get your crap together in 30 or 40 seconds. Maybe you don't just run straight in. Maybe you run back to your car, grab a shotgun or an AR or something, and then you come back, but you don't wait 70 minutes. Uh, are we allowed to talk about our, our, our previous experiences of, of our, our, shameful lives that we've had in our past yeah when we were thieves and such yeah extortionists um but i'm italian so let's just take that for a second being that i'm italian i, I mean it kind of made sense for me to like be an extortionist guy be an intimidator like hey oh, oh hey you know <laughs> we so and i i hope there's italians that are offended by that because they'd be the first ones ever but um I think, okay, so when I was working, you know, when I was 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 um, one of the street gangs uh, that was more better funded, more better funded than the other gangs, um, you know, the uh, the very first one, Columbine, went down. And um, that was like, I don't know what day it was on, but I remember that the first weekend when school wasn't in session, I want to say it happened on a Friday because I feel like the following day, Saturday, we were practicing doing entries without waiting. We were we we had come up with it just in our own little town that I was working in. Said, "Hey, look, this is what we think should be best to help these children." And that is simply to say, first guy that goes in, he's in uniform. He's got to go. He's got to go in. Period. And for these cowards to sit there and wait, even when there's a group of them waiting. They, they, they should be, um, I, I hope I'm taking the right role in this because there's no other role for me to take. I, I can't pretend like what they did was right. Um, it, it's simply, yeah, it, it's simply cowardice and criminal. I, I absolutely think it's criminal. So if they're going to pull us over and tax us, then they should have to go in when it's, it's scary to do. Yep. And certainly there were parents willing to do it. We give up our lives for our children. Yeah, and we're not paid to, and we're not, well, we're not, you know, the average parent isn't trained to. And so, you know, for them to, yeah, to sit out there, it's, it's unconsciousable. They, they should be fired. They should be willing to quit. They should, you know, probably, yeah, I don't know. It's yep. Never yep. do that type of job again. Yeah. And, and the, I remember that technology or not technology, I guess maybe the, the knowledge has progressed since that time. I remember in the early two thousands, um, I was the only person on, on my department. There was actually one other guy in the country, Greg Crane, 
who was a cops in, I think, Texas. And he, we were the only two people in the country that, that I was aware of that were advocating for fighting back. Because at that time, the cops were told to teach the schools, the teachers and the kids, hey, if anybody comes in and starts shooting, uh, try to lock the doors. But more importantly, curl up and make yourself a very easy target uh, in the corner and just wait for him to come room to room and hope he doesn't get through the door. And Greg Crane and I were kind of saying, hey, wait, what if you go into a classroom and there are 15 kids who are throwing crap at your face like their books and their pencils and they're attacking you and mobbing onto you? Yeah, you're going to get a few of them, but you're not going to get all 15 of them. And what would you, from a tactical standpoint, if you were going to go in and massacre, massacre 15 people, what wouldn't you want them to do? Fight back. Right. And, and at that time, it was, no, no, you shouldn't do that. You're just going to, it'll be worse, which I think is horrible advice. So times have moved on. I think now there's more training that, yeah, sometimes you got to be the sheepdog. You got to go in. You got to make stuff happen. And then they still failed. Like, there's no excuse. There's zero excuse. 